Okay, I'm starting the recording. So welcome everyone. So glad you're here to listen to the story of Susan's story. I would like to especially thank Shirley Wiseman, who's on the Zoom this evening for introducing me to Susan's story. So thank you for that introduction, Shirley. And of course, I want to uh, thank my partner in Zoom crime, John Pierre. So uh, Susan's story, Susan M. story, excuse me, is a Salmagundi non-resident artist. She was recently awarded an individual artist grant through the Art Center of the Capital District from the New York State Council on the Arts Decentralization Program. Her project, to paint a life-size apple tree through the seasons around the apple tree, will be viewed publicly for the first time this evening. Her project is dedicated to her dad, Stanley Maltzman, who is um, on the Zoom this evening. Stanley is, of course, an artist, um, PSA, HFH. Hall of Fame honoree. Thank you, Susan. Um, <laughs> the Tree Man and to her friend, Bill Creevy, PSA, MP, HFH. H and the Mix Master. Susan will share her story, discuss the progress and process of her grant project. Susan is a landscape artist, primarily working in pastels. She's a signature master pastelist member of the Pastel Society of America, and she serves on their board of governors. She is a member of the Academic Artists Association, the Audubon Artists, the Hudson River Valley Art, Association, the Salma Gundy Club, and the Catherine Lorillard Wolf Club. Her work has been included in many national and international exhibitions and galleries. She has received numerous artistic honors, including the gold and silver medals of honor from Audubon Artists and the Anna Hyatt Huntington Bronze Medal for Pastel from the Catherine Lorillard Wolf Art Club. Her awards from the Pastel Society of America include many numerous arts. So um, at this point in time, I would like to um, encourage you to put any comments and or questions in the chat. Um, as we said prior, your cameras are off and your audios are off, but we encourage you to participate through the, the chat. So at this point in time, please give a big welcome to Susan. Good evening, everybody. I first of all would like to thank the Selma Gundy Club, Bonnie and Shirley for offering me this wonderful, wonderful opportunity this evening. And um, I thank all of you for taking the time tonight to hear my story. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Bonnie has asked me to discuss a lot of different things. So in order to get that all done, I think that I should get right to the presentation and share my screen. Okay. Oh, for some reason, it doesn't want to open it. All right. Oops. There we go. Dun, 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 dun. I need some music. Um, so the name of this program is the artist, the grant and the story. So that is a lot to, to discuss. I wanted to start with um, a little bit about my background and my family, which Bonnie wanted me to talk about. I um, grew up in Yonkers and um, I learned a lot from my mother, Rachel Petrozelli Maltzman. She was um, very good at sewing and using her hands and she was also an oil painter. She was a, a housewife, but she still was very active doing all these other creative things. I was very fortunate as a child to grow up in such a uh, creative family environment. Um, 
there were many artists around me except for my sister however um she was much more academic and she is great to have around for um for correcting my <laughs> my speeches and uh written material so it's worked out really well for me <laughs> And okay, this is uh, one of my mother's beautiful, delicate oil paintings. It's on canvas. And here is another one on a um, Formica board. Um, my father had found some circles that were at the dump that had been used. They were cutouts from stereos. And he thought they would be great because it was something sealed already. Um, so my mother used them and painted she had a really good time. And I think I just, I love this one particularly. Okay, and another artist in my family was my uncle. He was married to my mother's sister. This is a contour line drawing that I did when I was a student. And I kept a sketchbook of contour line drawings. Um, I actually won a scholarship for my sketchbook of contour line drawings. It really has ended up being a valuable tool. But anyway, I wanted to talk about my uncle. Okay, he, he um, did a lot of uh, mixed media collage work, working with watercolors and acrylic, um, different papers and, and different mediums to create texture. This is a very large painting. Um, you can see all the little textures here in the background. I think, yeah, I can zoom in. I think he did that with crackling paper and paint, but it's very interesting. And now how does she zoom out? There she goes. Okay. Oops, sorry. And here is another collage. And if you look carefully right here, it looks maybe there's even a piece of fabric that he put on there and there's lots of different papers. And he used to show um, annually in Green, <laughs> in Greenwich Village, sorry. Um, I think it was every year there was an outdoor show and he would always attend. And here we have Daddy Dearest. He is a PSA Hall of Fame honoree and uh, his website is right there if you're interested. Um, there he is in his studio. This picture was taken back in April and um, he's going to be 100 years old July 4th. And as you can see, he is still painting and having fun um, with a little help from his friends. <laughs> Um, he was, of course, a huge influence on my work. Um, he taught me everything that I know, uh, just about. Um, I was always looking over his shoulder and soaking everything up like a sponge. Um, he had written two books, which are uh, the Bibles on drawing, I'd say. Um, you can see that he was he is quite the draftsman. He really has a love for nature and trees, the outdoors. He always has, he was a boy scout, you know. And this is some of his pastel work. This is a recent painting. You can see he also uses a beautiful palette. And I believe this painting was done on uh, sanded paper. And here is another painting, which is something he did a little earlier. I believe this was on Wallace paper. You can see his fine drawing of trees. There you go, there's a good example. And this is a drawing with pastel pencil on probably a handmade paper from New York Central Art Supply Store, which we miss dearly. We used to go down there, it was like going to the candy store. Um, this is a lithograph, which uh, my father did. He drew on a limestone and um, 
the prints were made right off of the stone. Um, this particular one was hand painted with watercolor and this and two other lithographs of his are part of the permanent collection in the Metropolitan. Um, he's also in some other collections such as the Butler and Reader's Digest. Um, and he uh, did some drawings for Steuben Glass and they were engraved on some of the glass years ago. So my education. There I am with Daddy Dearest, I believe this was in 63. Um, <laughs> and we were out painting on a beach. I think it was Rockaway. And um, as I said before, I learned a lot from my father looking over his shoulder because he was always uh, drawing and painting at night. Uh, after work, he was a commercial artist and he would bring me home art supplies all the time. You know, if there were colored pencils that were gonna be tossed, he'd bring them home for me and I'd color with these little nubs or um, little bits of pastel, um, different papers, anything to keep me going. Um, and later on, uh, we went into the city a lot. It was very, um, um, it was it was very convenient to live in Yonkers because it took a half an hour to get into the city and I was able to attend a lot of the galleries and the museums and um, I can remember I was probably about the same age as in this picture and we had gone to the Guggenheim Museum and I loved looking at the permanent collection and I saw the impressionists there and really was attracted to their work. And then um, when I saw Degas and uh, Ray Don, I was really uh, pulled in, sucked in forever um, because I just loved the pastel and the mark making and the colors. Um, it was just something that I never forgot. Um, so, um, that was a huge influence on me and I didn't realize at the time I was taking dancing lessons. Uh, maybe that's another reason why I like Degas work so much, but, um, there, there's just this connection of, um, of, uh, the movement of trees and nature and dancing. I always think of them dancing. So uh, later on, I um, went with my dad. I tagged along whenever he did um, workshops and um, I would assist him a little bit and we'd uh, sort of be like a comedy team uh, <laughs> and kind of entertained everybody. But it was a great, you know, hands-on education. And then I attended Parsons School of Design for fashion design. It was uh, way back when, when Parsons was in a warehouse down on 54th Street, um, right by the river. And the classes were very small. I think in the graduating class, it was about the third of the original size and it might've been 20 students. Um, the illustration there uh, on the right-hand side was one of my projects on my third year because it was a three-year certificate course that I took. Uh, it was very intense and uh, this sketch was made out of gray chiffon and the skirt had about 12 full circle panels and that's huge. <laughs> uh, and all of those sequins were sewn on by hand. Uh, it was quite a job and we had to get these projects done no matter what. And we rarely slept, um, but I had the whole family helping me in my parents' dining room because I commuted from Yonkers to New York to school. So uh, we called in the whole family my mother and my aunts uh, to sew all these sequins so I would get this this gown done and then I would bring it to school and they'd rip it apart in a fitting and <laughs> start all over again. 
Um, but uh, one thing I did want to say, I'm just remembering, um, everything was very focused towards fashion design, but there was a very strong foundation of drawing and color and um, the elements of good design, whether it is in fashion or uh, graphic design or illustration, whatever. So it has helped me with my fine art now. So I was um, in the garment business for, I don't know, maybe 12 years. And when I approached 30, I retired. I found it very stressful and it was um, as hectic and there was as much pressure as when I was in school, if not more. And um, it was kind of wearing on my health. I'm a very delicate person. And so um, I started working more on my fine art. Uh, when my dad saw my interest in pastel, he mailed me uh, a set of Rembrandt pastels so I could work with some real tools because all I had were little bits. And I remember one of my first paintings was a sunflower because I knew of this artist out there that was drawing these beautiful sunflowers. Mine didn't look anything like his though. <laughs> and I'm talking about Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy Wright. Um, but as I progressed and, and improved and after many paintings and drawings, I started showing my work with my dad as a professional artist. Another part of my education was meeting Bill Creevy, who I call the mix master. Um, this photograph, by the way, this gorgeous photograph was taken by Anthony Almeida, Almeida um, who does a lot of photography for the club and enters the shows and he's fabulous. Um, as you can see from this photo. Um, I met Bill when he was inducted into the Hall of Fame at PSA and we became friends and he invited me to come to the Salma Gundy Club for a monotype party. And um, it was a big thrill, it was very exciting. You'd sit around these tables with um, all these crazy artists and they'd be drinking wine and talking and creating. And um, it was quite an experience. And I don't know if it was the same evening or not, but then Bill said, hey, why don't you become a member? And I never would have thought to become a member of the Sal McGundy Club way back then. But since somebody suggested it, I thought, okay, why not? I can try. So I became a member and um, it has become one of the best things I've ever done. Um, I just love the, the atmosphere and the community. And I hadn't been there for over a year and I was down there uh, a couple of weeks ago to drop off my painting for the members show. And it was just such a um, special feeling to walk in through the doors and see Chris and Chris gave me a big hug and made me feel like I was home again. <laughs> So um, I'm sorry we can't all be there together tonight, but this is better than nothing and hopefully I'll see you at the end. But um, the thing about Bill that added to my education is that he is a mix, was a mix master. He would mix a lot of mediums. He could paint a pair five million times and they would never look the same mm -hmm. because it was about his process. My dad might paint or draw the same tree all the time, but he was going for the details and the quality of what nature had created. Bill was cooking something else up in his head. So um, it was, they were total opposites. And so it was really um, fantastic for me to have the two different perspectives. And Bill was also the publisher of two, or the author of two terrific books. Also should be added to your Bible collection. My father hid the first one from me for a long time. He wouldn't let me look at it until I got 
good enough. And I graduated. And then he gave me Bill Creevy's book on pastel for Christmas, I think it was, or my birthday. <laughs> so examples of the mix master's work. I'm not sure what's going on here. He has ballpoint pen, maybe colored pencil, charcoal, bit of water, maybe it's watercolor wash, maybe he put water on the charcoal, who knows. The mysteries. This one is ballpoint pen and oil pastel and he said it was on an onion skin paper. I happen to own this picture. Um, it's called Interstate. And it's got a classic creevy car. And this is another mixed media ballpoint pen again and oil paint. And it was just so creepy and weird. I loved it. I think he actually ended up covering up the entire ballpoint pen area, but I, I like it this way. And might I say, I think that yesterday was Bill's birthday or it's today's. And here is one of his classic pairs. And if I recall correctly, he painted this on fabric that he had put um, a lot of layers of different mediums on so that he could paint on it with pastel. Part of his crazy genius. This one was on plastic. And this one is pastel. I remember it was in the Pastel Society of America show and it was on wood panel. And I just love how he took a simple egg and made it so interesting into an abstract composition sitting on a shelf. And maybe I see a cup of tea over here. I don't know, <laughs> sideways. But I just, I just thought it was great. Anyway, um, I know you all want to hear about the grant, but it said my story as well. So I wanted to share with you um, what I do generally as an artist. I'm a pastel landscape painter. So I wanted to show you some of my work. Some of you may have seen this painting in the Salma Gundy member show. And it's also hanging in the Catherine Lorelei Wolf Club art show right now, both at the Salma Gundy. And this, this is just uh, pastel on arches paper. And um, this is just something I see when I go out for my daily walk. And next we have a little earlier pastel that I did that I always loved and it's on museum board which my dad used to do or still does sometimes. I don't usually work on, muse on museum board anymore, um, but I've always liked this one. So this is a birch tree from his yard, in fact. And here is another of my pastels. Um, it's a pond up the street from me in the uh, nature preserve in the winter time. And I think this one I did on a watercolor paper. And I just build up the layers and get my textures that way. The fun part for me was doing the water right there. I like that part. <laughs> okay, and here is a, whoops. Another painting that I did, um, just something I see in the woods. And I, I did a uh, golden underpainting here. So it would um, radiate. You'll notice that I like to paint winter a lot. I like the skeleton of the tree that I can see at that point and the shadows and something about the coldness of winter. I don't know. I just do it. I, and it's also a challenge to paint it without doing blue all the time. Maybe I should go back to that. Oops, I messed up here. Ah, hold on guys. Well, I skipped one. Anyway, 
Uh, this is another pastel I did and it's a little bit looser and it is on sanded paper, which I don't usually use. Hmm, something's happened to my slideshow. <laughs> it's something downloaded now. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Um, this is another recent painting. Um, again, it's winter and there is really no white in there. I used a pale yellow, there's blue, there's peach, and there's, there's, there's just no, no white. <laughs> but I think it still tells the story. This was actually a demonstration I did for a, the uh, Colony Art League, which is a local art group near me. And um, this was inspired from a trip to California to visit family on the West Coast. And I exaggerated the shapes and made them tall and thin. They were a little bit flatter, but I wanted to do something different. And again, I used uh, handmade paper. Um, I just like to, I like to experiment with different papers and the textures that they have. Um, it's harder to use and you have to be careful because you can get a lot of mud, but I like the challenge. And here is another local scene and another. Um, just around the corner, taking my walk. The trees weren't blue though. But uh, most of these paintings that I'm showing you have won a lot of um, awards um, and have been honored. And um, so I'm just trying to give you a sampling of what I do. And you can see that I've been attracted to apple trees for a long time. This one was really kind of from imagination. And um, I used greens and reds to do this, to give you the impression of gray and black and white. And here is another apple tree painting. This is the last one I'm gonna show you. Um, I did this on handmade paper and it was terrible because it just kept coming off <laughs> no matter what I did. Um, I like to, I can spray, but not too much spray. And I don't like to spray at the end. So um, I have framed this picture and it's not gonna go anywhere. It's staying where it is. This is actually inspired from the tree that I used for the grant. So um, I applied for my first grant. Um, I guess that's a year and a half ago, um, maybe two years. And um, I was very delighted to um, have the grant approved. And it was an artist's grant to um, paint to paint my tree for my project, which is called Around the Apple Tree. I wanted to paint a life-size apple tree that would go through the different seasons. And um, one of the reasons I wanted to do this was, well, I love apple trees. I love their shapes and the way they bend and so forth. But um, I've noticed that there is um, much more of an interest in apples and apple trees in my area. It's become part of, um, part of the economy because people are making apple cider, hard cider, um, there's lots of apple picking, that's always happened. But I think the um, hard cider has really brought in new interest and there are a lot more orchards in the area. And I think that like many things, uh, particularly our food, we take it for granted and we don't stop and think about how we get this food and what's put into it. And I feel an apple tree puts a lot into growing and producing this wonderful fruit for us that we enjoy so many different ways. So um, I um, dedicated this project to the tree man and the mix master because what they have taught me has gone into this project. 
Um, there is a uh, community part to this grant. I am painting my own tree, which is behind me. And um, I will also be providing a um, eight foot tree, which the community will be painting um, on their own. Um, and I'm donating that to a new uh, business in town called the Volunteer Orchards. And they make apple cider and they do uh, apple tree pruning and so forth. So um, they're in the community and I was going to have this community event, which I still hope to have this fall and everybody's invited, you can all come. And um, we usually have a fall festival and there'll be apple cider pressing and I will be showing my tree and um, probably a video or a slideshow of everything that I've gone through um, making this project. Um, what else? Well, part of, part of this project, um, well, first of all, it um, was awarded to me from the Art Center of the Capital Region and the funds were from the decentralized program, a re-grant program of the New York State Council on the Arts with the support of our dear Governor Como. Um, and, whoops. Oh, sorry, I got ahead of myself. And I don't think I could go back. Sorry. Hi, everyone. This is Susan's <laughs> story. And I wanted to announce to you today some really exciting news. I have been awarded a grant by the Art Center of the Capital Region on behalf of the New York State Council on the Arts. The purpose of this grant is to help support me in my project called Around the Apple Tree. I wanted to do this project so I could paint a life-size apple tree and bring awareness to everyone of how important this tree is to our community. When I finished painting the tree, I will invite the public to come to Conklin Hall here in Rensselaerville and uh, celebrate the apple tree and all that it gives us, along with having some community events. And uh, so right now, um, it is May 13th, 2020. And I am here at the Samuel Jenkins house in Rensselaerville. And behind me is one of my very all time favorite apple trees. And this is the one that I will be painting and sharing with all of you. So come join me. Okay, so here I am at my favorite tree, my favorite apple tree. And you can see how gorgeous it is. It has so much character. Uh, it's not as old as the house, but it is still quite old, probably 45 years, 50 years, maybe. Um, it's great from any view, but I'm going to get started. Okay. Oh, good. I thought I missed this one. I was going to say part of the uh, grant program required that I um Susan sorry to interrupt um I'm not trying to explain this you're chopped off part of your presentation oh okay maybe I there we go I'm so sorry better perfect thank you okay thank you for telling me <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, grant work that they would give me half of the amount that the project needed to be uh, created. Um, so I had to um, get donations, whether it was money or supplies to make my project. Um, I have to say that my local GNH was extremely generous. They gave me all of the paint that I'm using. Um, and Home Depot gave me all of the panels that I'm using. Um, and just a note for anyone that might go through this whole thing, uh, they said to me usually for the dollar amount of my request, um, you have to apply for a grant through them. 
Um, but somehow they scared it up for me and that was terrific. And a lot of my local friends and family have also been very supportive and helpful in different ways, giving me supplies, money, um, heart, some of their, their wisdom. And actually I have a question for everybody out there and you can email me or whatever. Um, I'm wondering how I'm gonna finish, how to seal everything on this painting because I'm using acrylic and I'm using oil and it's going to get dirty when I move it around. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know. So anyway, alrighty. So this uh, is the first sketch that I made the day that I did the video that you watched previously. Um, it was just in my Strathmore sketchbook using charcoal, charcoal. And what I wanted to achieve was really just note um, the shape, the the major shape of the tree and the major limbs, although I started getting a little spaghetti-like, but um, that's just, <laughs> I didn't pay that much attention to that. And, and this is what I really use to um, draw my tree. I used this for my, my reference and some photographs that I had on my computer, but I, I was sketching from this tree all the time and thinking about my proportions. And one other thing that I did, um, my tree that I've painted is only 12 feet by 12 feet. Um, this um, is actually, this tree is actually bigger, but it's as much as I could do in my barn. But anyway, I started to say to get the proportions of the tree when I was out on the field, I held my hands around the tree to get a feeling for how wide it was. And I raised my arm up to see where that first big limb was. And um, I modified it a bit because I knew my painting would be smaller, but this is how I, I made my tree. Some people asked if I graphed it, but I don't, I don't do graphing. And this is just a little sketch that I did um, really small, it was like four and a half by five, just for color feeling in springtime when everything was blooming. Um, this was a larger one done on, on a, a handmade paper and I don't know what it was, I just kept grabbing things and um, to work on and, and I used water on this at first and the whole thing puckered up lovely and <laughs> um, so then I just let it dry and I put pastel on it and it, worked out pretty well. But this is just um, giving the impression of what I saw and what I felt. I wasn't, I'm not intending and I was never intending to do a, a duplicate um, painting of the actual tree with every detail. That's not how I paint. Um, I don't see the point of doing that. <laughs> Okay, and, and here Susan, is just the sorry, there's a comment in the chat from Gabriel Stockton. You ask people for ideas about mediums, and he writes ghosts and matte spray medium by Golden. He says they may even donate. Well, I tried them. <laughs> okay, I, I tried a lot of it's interesting. I tried a lot of the um, art material manufacturers and I could not get anything, but I think part of it was because of COVID. There were a lot of people that were hesitant because of COVID, their business was hurting and they didn't want to give. Um, but I'm sorry, you said golden and it's a spray. It's called GOSS, G-O-S-S -S, and MATT, M-A-T-T-E, spray medium. Okay, great. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. Um, oh, and then okay. he goes gloss. Uh-huh. Would it be really shiny? <laughs> I don't want it to Sounds shiny. like it. I don't know. Uh, all right. I'll have to look into that. Sure. Thank you very much. Okay. So this is just another sketch that I did on rice paper with pastel, which was also a nice little challenge to try and get it to stay on that paper. But I just wanted that feeling of the natural paper. So I did it. I was just having fun. And this is just another... Uh, watercolor with pastel that I did on location. And it's interesting because the tree really had sort of a green side and a red side, at least from my eyes. And here is another one that I did in the fall. I was, you know, spending my time trying to record the different seasons. 
And this one, I started putting the apples in the tree, didn't actually have red apples. And in a way I was glad because I didn't want to have red polka dots on my painting, let alone on my big tree. Um, so I'm probably gonna put a little bit of red on the apples, but they're mostly going to be green. And here is just a close up study. It's pastel and watercolor. And this one was my first crack with oil sticks. And um, it was a lot of fun. And um, I'm hoping to use them on top of the acrylic painting that I've done on the actual tree. And this is a larger pastel, which I did in the studio. I consider it more of a finished piece and it was a pretty good size. This is a different view than the one that I've been working on, but I, I loved the, um, the vines and the dead branches coming down like a veil. So the tree. So here is my wonderful husband assembling my canvas. And I could only go the 12 feet because that's as high as my ceiling is. Excuse me. Um, uh, that's not gonna work. Okay. And okay. My daughter said I shouldn't show this video, but I am anyway. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to give you the impression of my entering the barn and facing my canvas. See all the panels are reinforced. Fortunately, I had skylights, so I had some light. And there's my assistant. And don't look at that. <laughs> we go up and up and up. There are some of my paints ready to go. Oh, sorry, I don't mean to make you all see that again. Why is that? Okay, good. Alrighty, so we got rid of that white and we put in a sky. And there I am late in the evening in the winter and um, drawing my tree in and I started drawing it in with um, charcoal, which may have been a mistake because uh, now I have to erase it. Uh, I also started to use white chalk, which is very easy to remove. And um, it was great because I could just draw freely uh, and that you know just washes off. But then I went over the major um, shapes of the tree with an acrylic marker. And that's what I'm doing up there on the top of the scaffolding with my hard hat. Okay, my next step, I used crackle on the tree to um, hopefully give me more of a texture of the bark. And when I applied it, I tried to keep that in mind, um, the direction and the shapes and the knots and so forth on the tree. And I didn't use it on the very top of the tree of the branches because they would be smoother from where you are down on the ground. You wouldn't see all of that. So I was trying to create more perspective that way. And you can see my, my little sketch there taped on and that's what I was following. And on the right hand side, uh, you can see I have my little palette out and I used brushes and palette knives and, and all kinds of things to uh, try and get the texture. What I did was I mixed up some of those um, acrylic paints that you saw on the can in the beginning. I mixed up some basic colors and then I 
I mixed those colors as well while I was painting the tree. And here are some details of the trunk. You can see on the left side on the bottom here, um, there was a base color of the red and the green, but then I started painting the bark on top of it. And there I am again on the trapeze painting. <laughs> it's interesting how the different lighting, all the colors look different. What I, what I did was I, I pretty much focused on the trunk um, and then I was just blocking in where the leaves were going to be and the flowers and the snow and so forth. They're not finished. They're just noted where they're going to be. And these are close-ups of the snow. You can see some of the chalk marks. I should use this and not my finger. You can see some of the chalk marks where I was scribbling. I was probably on a Zoom call. And another, just painting. You can see I'm using a really small brush there, surprisingly. I also found the acrylic paint dried much darker than I thought it was going to be. Here again, I have places made in chalk for the blooms. Another detail. I have to go back um, and of course, make all of these um, details a lot finer and add a lot more color. Um, and I also have to um, grade, the, make the changes between the seasons a little bit more uh, comfortable, not being blunt. That's just a close up of a dead branch that I enjoyed painting. And another close up. I started putting in where the apples will be, but they're not gonna stay that way, nor will the leaves. It's one of my favorite branches on the tree. That's why there are two photos, maybe three. <laughs> now here I started adding another uh, value of green, actually two, and it really gives the painting a lot more depth And there I am. Uh, this is where the tree is right now. I will also be adding grass and some apples and snow and so forth. That's the beginning of the snow and the, the dirt, but there will be tall grass and green grass and apples. So I thank you all. And um, please go to my website and join my mailing list, um, my newsletter, and you'll he'll hear more about this project. It's not finished, but it's getting there. Um, and I do hope that you will come up to Rensselaerville when I do have its big debut to the public and you can help paint that other tree. Um, I think uh, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and if anybody has any questions, hi there. Thank you, Susan, that <laughs> was just great. Um, I'm gonna go through the list and John Pierre, please help me. We're gonna yeah. um, promote you to panelists, allow you to have your cameras on and your audios on. So um, just give us a few minutes to be doing that, please. Maybe we can get this one out of the way first. Charity Henderson is dying to know about the grant writing process. If you have any. Uh... It was tedious and very hard for me. I am not a writer, um, but I did. I wrote down my thoughts. I had to answer specific questions. I don't remember how many essays there were, but there were quite a few describing my work describing um, the whole process that I was going to do, what my intent was. Um, and one thing that I didn't put on the um, application was that after I have the um, 
show at Conklin Hall, I hope to look for a gallery, maybe a few galleries, where I will be showing this piece of work along with um, the sketches and kind of have a traveling show. Um, and also uh, print a book of all the sketches that people could purchase. Um, but for the grant, I had to itemize by the month everything that I was going to do and when. So I had a calendar of everything I was going to do um, and when. Uh, the materials I was going to use, my estimated cost, where I was going to get um, the donated materials and funds for the other half of the grant. Um, what else did they ask me? And how it was going to serve the community because that was an important um, aspect to the grant. What I was going to do, what my reach out would be, um, which is, <laughs> I couldn't do anything because <laughs> we had COVID. Um, I reached out to the media. Um, one thing I was very fortunate to have is that the Arts Center actually went over my grant with me before I submitted it. They were willing to do that. So um, they had made a few points to me. Um, I had my sister, my friend, uh, look over what I wrote because I knew what I was talking about, but I didn't know if they would know what I was talking about and trying to express, as I said, because I'm not a writer. Um, so that was extremely helpful. And to make sure that you're going over every item that they're bringing up in this grant, make sure you're answering all those questions, needs, things that they want to have included in, in your project. I think that's very important. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't know if Charity feels I answered her question. Yes, thank you, Susan. That was very helpful. Okay, great. Good luck. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we have yeah, an, I, I, another, qu another question that's uh, uh, of interest to several people is how are you going to get it out of your barn? <laughs> uh, well, um, I'm going to break open the skylight and the big crane is going to come in. No, it actually comes apart. It's eight panels or five panels, excuse me. It's five panels and it all can be taken apart into the panels and then put back together. Okay. They're sheets of plywood. Another question deals with uh, the fact that they want to know if you have the snow on the spring flowers or if there is uh, like all, all the season at once on one painting. Uh, there's a slight confusion there. Um, on oh, some... I'm doing the different seasons? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, at the top of the tree, um, let's see. Well, if you want me to go back to sharing the screen. On the top of the tree, I had the limbs with the snow on it and then the buds on the little branches and then you see a little bit of green and then there's the white flowers. Now you can have snow at that time here uh, when the, there are flowers and then the flowers kind of get a rusty uh, hair coming down from it and then that falls off and then you start getting teeny weeny little green apples and they get bigger and bigger. And so this is gonna be a progression going down the tree. Very good. I'm, I'm sold. <laughs> so this was really great. Um, if anybody has a question or comment, please unmute yourself and you can speak. Or if you prefer to write it in the chat, that would be great. Joanne Ross wants to know if uh, the technique that you have learned from this project will be applied in future uh, work of yours. Um, possibly. 
Um, I would really like to work with oil sticks. I think that it would be close somewhat in some ways with pastel having something in my hand to work with, which I like very much to be drawing and doing mark making as opposed to, uh, I may offend somebody like you, Jean, smearing with a brush, <laughs> I don't know. Um, so it, it, it may, I think really anything you do affects the next thing you're going to do. So um, we'll see. It was really nice to work large. It's very freeing. Uh, show. Susan, uh, this is Terry Urban in Brooklyn. And uh, did I hear you say you were looking for places to show this? Galleries. Yes. Brooklyn Waterfront Artists Coalition has some very tall walls. They have a 10 and a half foot ceiling. Okay. Would that be something that could accommodate you? Uh, I would. No, 10 and a half would not be high enough. No. The painting is 12 feet by 12 feet. Oh, okay. Yeah. You think about New York State apple growers at says. They always have an exhibit there, Susan. You know how, they, how the fairs are. It's Barb. Uh, I'm not hearing you clearly. Maybe you can email me. Yeah, I will. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. You're welcome. Is there any any obvious connection to the Big Apple and your apple tree, or is this? Uh... No, no, no. Um, I live upstate in the Catskills. Um, it's just apples are um, an important um, industry in New York. You know, the apples grow in New York, and and the farmers make money. I see Elizabeth is raising her hand. Elizabeth, I, if you have something to say, please talk. I don't want to interrupt Susan. Can you hear me? Yes, sure. Hi. Uh, Susan, this is one of the very best presentations I have ever heard in all of my time at Salmagun. Enormously interesting to show how you arrived, how your career started, your dad, uh, Everything was just so good. You rarely see a presentation that has this much split. And I'm sure that all of us tremendously appreciate what must have been a lot of hard work to put this together. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, it actually was because I had to find all of the images. <laughs> and that was the hard part. And I wasn't really expecting to do such a long slideshow, but we decided that it was best. It would be easier than the technology we were going to use if I didn't. So it was the right um, thing to do. And I learned something. It's, it's fantastic to see more of the artist history instead of the exact process. You know, the, the process of the grant and how you did it was great to see how you're career evolve is is just priceless I and mean, you just don't get to see that and i thought your former work example were extraordinary so that that was just wonderful and also i'd like to say your husband is definitely a one-of-a-kind jewel and and you have an adorable assistant ah oh, thank you yes yes they're they're both pretty good I'll keep them. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really well done, Susan. It's Marcia. Hi, Marcia. How are you? I just love your project. Uh, <laughs> uh, your love of the trees just shows through and through your father, your family. I have the same connection because my family was in the lumber business and artists in the family. So the love of trees shows through. Um, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful job. And um very inspiring. Thank, Thank you. So, you. so Gabriel, I, I see you raising your hand. Please unmute yourself. And then after Gabriel, Sharon, please. Yes, I uh, really enjoyed this uh, presentation. I think it was done superbly. I think the Chronicle uh, 
logical part of sharing your your growing up of being an artist to growing into uh where you are today is amazing it's so inspirational and for some people here um they might be interested in you've talked about this mixed media and i think we don't hear much about mixed media um can you share like the process where you're using watercolor with a pastel is the watercolor used as a, like an underpainting um well there's different ways to do that uh sometimes i will use watercolor uh, or tempera you can use oil um and rough in your painting i would say now some artists will put in a lot of detail um, or they may choose a uh, one color and do a value painting underneath, just like you would with oil. But um, in using a different medium, uh, what I like to do, I do it so that I let it show through the pastel. And that helps to give things a glow and uh, more texture and depth. So you can, use, you can also use pastel with alcohol as an underpainting, like it's watercolor, you can also use it with water. It doesn't spread it quite as evenly as alcohol does, but I like that. <laughs> I like it to be a little unpredictable and not as even. Thank you. Sharon Costello, I believe you're raising your hand. If you can unmute yourself to speak, Yeah, I please. think I am unmuted. Hi, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wish I was still in Rensselaerville to see this amazing thing, um, but maybe I'll get there. Um, anyway, I, I'm interested in this, how you're going to do the, the tree that the participants are going to paint at the event. Are you going to like draw it out and they'll paint it in or is it all going to be just from scratch, a blank canvas sort of thing? No, I will, I will outline the tree. And I'm thinking I probably will put a blue sky in around it. And I'll mix up some colors for them and see what happens, you know. That sounds like <laughs> a lot of fun. Maybe and you're gonna do that? Go flat and, and make colors all over it. <laughs> Is it for all ages? <laughs> yep. Yep. Great. Um, oh, great. I will be inviting senior citizens and children and anybody that wants to come and participate will be welcome to. Great. And is Sarah still with you? Did she help you with this project at all? Uh, she helped me with my slides this morning because I was having trouble with Great. The, le the words. I don't know the lettering. I couldn't get the right sizes and all these crazy things were happening. And, you know, she's more techie, but she, she took yes. over for me. Yes. Fixed it for mommy. Yes. But uh, no, she's busy. <laughs> well, that's good. I'd hear, I'd hear it. Lot. I'd hear yeah. it. So great to see you. Good to see you. Anne, I believe you're raising your hand. Hi, Susie. Such Hi. a great project and beautiful presentation. What was it like to um, work on such a big scale in terms of time and size? Like how long do usually you take on, let's say a small canvas and, and how long will this project take? And what is that like, you know, inside yourself? Um, well, usually if I work on something that's like a, a sheet of paper, 30 inches, um, it will take me maybe a, the camera. It's hard to say. Um, but I will keep going back to it and put it aside then and then come back again and maybe change it. I don't know. Um, this particular, and I often will get frustrated with those smaller pictures um, and start getting too nitpicky about it. This working large um, is, it's very freeing uh, because you're putting your whole arm into it. <laughs> um, time, well, I've been painting since, on the actual painting since um, the winter, the fall. Yeah, in the fall, I started in the fall uh maybe it was summer i'm sorry it, it's been about a year but i didn't work during the winter because because i'm in my my barn and it's not heated and it's not insulated 
So um, I could only be in here when it was maybe 50 degrees. So um, and now it's starting to get too hot. All right, I have one follow-up question. One follower. I was well, fascinated with your water when you said you love to paint the water. And then with the bark, you said you love to paint the bark. So can you just talk about like what happens for you when you're in the either water or bark? Well, with the bark, uh, I feel the texture. You know, it's as if you're running your hands against it. And um, I see a lot of colors in the bark. I know most people think of trees as gray, um, but I see pinks and oranges and reds and greens. And same as I do in just about everything, I think. <laughs> I think from afar, things may look more muted because your eye is blending the colors together. But when you look up closely, um, Hi, Jane. <laughs> when you look up close, yeah, I like it's my hand. <laughs> Is it um, yeah. You'll see there are a lot of different colors in there. And and I was going to say, Annie, that um, I could probably be working on this the rest of my yeah, life. Yeah, here. If I want to get really fussy. <laughs> and I'm going to try not to. Uh, Susan, I have a question regarding the, the printed version of the book. Uh, would you consider having a, a pop-up book at some point inside the book, you know, like a... Golly gee, I didn't imagine the thing coming up. I like that, Gene. That would be really cool. Are you volunteering to cut out that page that will pop up? <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, but... Uh, <laughs> I'll give you a free copy. <laughs> okay, I'll use it for my family tree. I'll, I'll, <laughs> All right. So this this was a fantastic evening, Susan. Thank you so so much. It was just marvelous, and it was great to um, see your family's work and your work. It was just really beautiful. So thank you so much. Thank you for twisting my arm. Absolutely, <laughs> Elizabeth. Did you want to say a closing remark before we end the Zoom? Um, well, this is this is really, I think, appropriate to end my term as president on such a very high note, Susan. Thank you so very, very much. I almost hate to, to stop now. Uh, <laughs> is is Pat Garrick on tonight? Is she here? I don't think so. Oh, okay. She has been uh, an, a very vocal, loud advocate for critique session. I'm wondering if the two weeks that are remaining, anyone would like to be in, would be interested in having an open critique session where everybody can speak and we all learn something. Uh, we've done it before and it was very, very rewarding. With COVID, it was kind of hard for us to get more Zoom things going. But uh, let me know or Bonnie know if you would like to schedule, or like us to schedule an open critique. Thank you. Gabriel is putting thumbs up. Gabriel is a new member who's right. really <laughs> into the club. So, uh, yeah. Thank uh, you, Gabriel. <laughs> All right. Thank so you. let's call it a night. And thank you, everyone. It was just a perfect evening. Good night, all. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>